All right guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about tennis and golfer's elbow and how to go about treating them. If you've had these ailments before, then you know how terrible they can be. They can literally wreck your life. You know, it can go from, oh, I felt a little something in my elbow to I literally cannot lift a coffee cup without searing pain. So before it gets to that point, try these exercises and let us know how it goes. So I'm just gonna take you through step by step. So the first thing that you need to really think about in order to make this better is to find out the stressor and therefore decrease or remove it completely. So um, if you are a tennis player or a golfer, it could be those sports, but it honestly could be anything that's causing these things. It could be, you know, you just started a new workout program and you know, you don't have the most perfect form and you've been putting more stress through that elbow. Um, you know, it could be literally anything. You've started a new job, you're typing a lot, could be anything. So you just have to sit down and think about like, what have I changed recently? What have I started doing? Or if you are an athlete in one of those sports, it definitely could be that sport itself. That's the most obvious reason. <laughs> um, so we never like people telling people to stop doing their sport or to decrease it. But in this case, it is something that you really do need to think about doing because the issue here is chronic inflammation that's happening of those tendons, um, whether it's on the outside here, that's more tennis elbow, or on the inside here, that'd be more golfer's elbow. Um, the technical terms would be lateral epicondylitis or medial epicondylitis. Um, so, you know, you may not have to stop them completely, but just decreasing them. That, that's the number one thing, because if you just keep playing through it and try to just keep crushing yourself, it's never gonna be better. It's gonna be really, really hard to progress through these stages of healing if you just keep irritating it. So the next thing after identifying the stressor is going to be to start with some basic isometrics, um, some stretching and some nerve glides. So I'm gonna show you guys all of those. So isometrics is basically just a way of activating the muscle group without actually moving anything. So it's just the most basic form of strengthening. So as boring as some of these exercises may be, trust me, you just need to progress through the stages and it will get better. But this is the first one I'm gonna show you is the isometric. So basically what you're gonna do is support your arm on a table or a couch, wherever you are comfortable, you can just put the weights near you. Um, two to three pounds is usually good to start and you wanna keep your wrist really straight with this. So not here, not here, just right in the middle. And you're literally just gonna hold this weight just like this for one minute on, one minute off for five rounds of that, okay? You can do it this way too if you really feel like it's more um, golfer's elbow or on the medial or inner side. Either way is good. You can do both or you can just focus on one or the other. Um, this side is gonna work, this, this holding it this way is gonna work this side a little bit more, holding it this way is gonna work this side a little bit more. So tennis elbow, golfer's elbow. Honestly though, if you have one or the other, it's good to just do both and just get the entire forearm really strong. So I would start with that for like the first week or so. If that goes well and you start to feel it getting better, you can progress to stage two. Um, actually, I lied. Before you get to the next stage, I wanna add two other things. So the stretching and the nerve glides, I almost forgot. So with that stage one isometrics, you can add in some stretching. So with these, you wanna keep your elbow straight. That's gonna actually work the forearm and not the bicep, right? So if you're just like holding here, trying to stretch, it's a little harder to feel it. So you wanna straighten out your elbow completely and then just gently use your other hand to push down with your wrist in order to stretch this. Don't be aggressive with this because it can hurt your wrist a little bit, but just gent gently until you feel a little stretch there. And then you can also go this way to stretch the opposite side. So you can just hold like 30 seconds or so, or even just go back and forth, just like what I'm doing, just back and forth, just for a second, and just do like 10 each direction. That works too. That can be right in that stage one with the isometric exercise. And then the other thing we like to give people is a nerve glide. So the nerve glide just kind of gives you a chance to slide that nerve in its track a little. Nerves can get like really bound down and tight. So just by moving the nerve in its track, it can help relieve some of your pain. So this is the one we usually go to the most. So we call it look at the hand, look away from the hand. There's several different nerve glides you can do. But this is our favorite one. So you're gonna start with your arm up like this. You're gonna flex your elbow, your wrist, and your fingers. You're gonna look at your hand. And then as you extend all three of those things, you're gonna look away from your hand. So look at the hand, look away, and extend the elbow, wrist, and fingers. So push those fingers down to the ground, and then come back. And you can just do these in like sets of 10. I like to give these kind of throughout the day 
instead of doing like 30 in a row, do like 10 in the morning, 10 in the afternoon, 10 at night. Just like that, okay? So all three of those are what I would normally give on like the first visit, somebody who's having tennis or golfer's elbow, have them work on those for about a week or so and then progress to the next stage as long as you're seeing improvement. So next stage, we're gonna go to eccentrics. So basically that is the lengthening phase of strengthening, right? So right, if I'm doing a bicep curl, just for reference, the eccentric portion would be the lengthening phase, so the lowering portion, okay? So in terms of your tennis or golfer's elbow, it's gonna be the lowering portion of your wrist. So what you're gonna do for just to work on eccentrics, you're literally gonna use your other hand to lift the wrist up, which seems silly, but if you have had this pain before, you know how bad it can be, so you, you'll probably want to do that anyways. So use the other hand, let go, and then just slowly lower it down. And you wanna go slow and you wanna go all the way down. So then again, lift it up, let go, slowly lower it down. This would be more for the tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, you can do the same thing, but just go the opposite direction. And like I said, if you have one or the other, it's a really good idea to just do both and just work both sides of the forearm, okay? So help it up, let go, slowly lower down. Just like that. And the same thing, you can do like two sets of 10, two to three sets of 10 of those, like up to twice a day if you have the time. These, like I said in the beginning, this can be kind of boring exercises, but this is what you have to do in order to kind of like stress those muscle groups and tendons slow and controlled, okay? So that's gonna be stage two. So stage one was the, just to kind of recap, isometric, so just holding with the stretching and nerve glides. And then stage two, you can add in just the eccentric only. Okay, and once that's feeling good, so like maybe week three, you can start adding in the concentrics and the eccentrics. So now, instead of using your other hand to lift the weight up, you can actually just use your muscle to lift it up and lower it down, okay? So now you're doing both, the shortening phase and the lengthening phase. So both of those things. That would be like more aggressive, a um, little bit more of a advanced strengthening exercise for that muscle group. And you will feel like get tired. You can go up a little bit in weight with these, um, but it's you know not a huge muscle group for most people, so you don't have to go super heavy. I would say like five, maybe eight pounds is like the most I would ever go with that. It's 10 pounds maybe, but probably not. It's like honestly probably a little bit too much. Um, so those are all the progressions that we would kind of go through for the forearm, but you can't really talk about tennis and golfer's elbow without also talking about the shoulder, okay? So for the most part, um, the reason why people get this issue in the first place is because that was just one of the things that broke down in the chain, but like, meaning like your whole arm is a chain, right? It's kind of all works together. So something else probably was weak, which caused that elbow to put more stress through it, okay? So that's something to think about is that something in your mechanics of the whole upper extremity chain here broke down, which caused that elbow to get more stress than it needed to, okay? So working on shoulder and back strength is something we do with every one of our patients that comes in with tennis or golfer's elbow. There's a lot of different things you can do to work on those things, rotator cuff strengthening, rows, um, pull downs, all kinds of stuff to kind of work on that upper extremity strength. Um, because we find that most patients that have these issues, um, these tennis or golfer's elbow, it's because of some weakness somewhere else in the upper, upper extremity chain, okay? So hopefully that was helpful to kind of just give you guys an idea of how to go through the progressions of dealing with this. It can be very frustrating, it can be very painful, but if you just are patient enough, kind of get rid of that stressor and go through those stages slow and controlled, it usually does get better for most people. Um, if you are struggling with this and you're having a hard time or it's not helping as fast as you want, definitely reach out to us. Another thing we like to do with most of these people is some dry needling. That's something we can do for you here in the office. If you feel like you need that extra little boost just to help you get over the hump. So please reach out if you're having any issues and let us know down below if you found this video helpful.